Hello everyone. Today I'm going to present to you our work about two-step sound source operation training on learned and latent targets. So in a conventional end-to-end -end source operation scheme, we usually call it time domain audio source operation. What we try to do is that we try to directly optimize all parts of the network jointly using a time domain loss from the estimated sources. So we try to optimize the encoder, the separation module, and the decoder simultaneously using scale invariant signal to distortion ratio uh, as, a, as a loss function. This is often called a mass-based architecture because the separation module actually estimates some masks in, in this latent space here, um, and then it applies these masks on the latent representation of the mixture. So, so we can get the two uh, corresponding latent, latent representations of the sources, and we can reconstruct the time domain signals, the corresponding time domain signals for the sources from these latent representations using uh, the decoder. So the motivation behind this work is actually that there are some challenges that they come up with this joint end-to-end uh, -end training approach. Because by jointly optimizing all parts of this network, uh, they could lead to uh, to some sub suboptimal. So, so this training procedure could lead could lead to some suboptimal uh, parts. For example, the encoder or the decoder. So what we propose is to independently learn a good latent representation. Uh, which means the encoder and the decoder that facilitates uh, the process of separating sounds. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to try to learn how to separate the sources using this pre-trained transformation directly on this space. In order to do so, you, we have to use either the ideal targets, the ideal representations of the, uh, of the sources, in this latent space or the masks in order to train uh, the, separate, the separation module. So the two-step source separation actually consists of, uh, of first to learn uh, the latent targets. So what we do is that we use the clean sources as we see here with the mixture. We pass them through the encoder and then a softmax layer in order to provide two masks that we apply again on top uh, uh, we apply it element-wise uh, to the um, uh, uh, to the latent space representation of the input mixture, and we get the corresponding latent targets V. And then, uh, in order to train this whole uh, autoencoder, we pass it through the decoder. We get the source estimates, and then for for the two sources, and then we use the negative permutation variant SISDR in order to train. Uh, this autoencoder. At the second step, we have to train the separation module to actually perform the separation on the latent space. In order to do so, we actually regress on the ideal latent targets that we can extract from, uh, from the first step. So we regress on these latent targets or the corresponding masks using the exact same loss, uh, the exact same negative um, scale environment SDR. So why actually uh, we would like to optimize on this latent space and why does it actually make sense to do so? So the separation objective function uh, that we use and let's say equivalently to maxi we want to maximize the SISDR uh, in the time domain as we see here. On the latent space when we use the SISDR, we use the estimates and the targets, but uh, on the latent space instead of the time domain signals. Also, we have a convolution decoder that, that is a transformation that takes an input from the latent space and it transforms it to something that corresponds to its time domain representation. And because it's a convolutional decoder, we can express it as a matrix multiplication, as we see here. Assuming also that we have the pseudo-inverse 
uh, we can get the pseudo inverse, we can also trans transform back from the time domain from the time domain back to the latent space. So we seek to find some kind of relationship between these two SISDR functions in the time domain and in the latent space. So first of all, we can uh, express the SISDR in any signal in, in any domain. And we could prove that by maximizing the SISDR is equivalent to maximizing the squared inner product of the estimate and the actual signal. Under some projection matrix, we can uh, P, let's say, for example, and the projections PY and PY hat, as we see here, we can extract a lower bound, uh, as we show here, and we say that effectively the squared of the inner product under of, of this signal under the projection matrix P is less or equal to something which is constant, and also it's always um, uh, non-negative, uh, plus the inner, the inner product in the first domain before the transformation. So by using these two uh, propositions, we can derive the relationships for, for the SISDR in the latent space, as we see here, and the SISDR in the time domain. So we see that, that uh, that uh, that the SISDR uh, in this latent space is less or equal than something constant again with the pseudo, uh, pseudo inverse of the matrix plus the SISDR in the time domain. And experimentally, we have seen that by maximizing uh, this value also leads to the maximization of, of the SISDR in the time domain. So once again, the overall process uh, during training is that we train the encoder and decoder only in the first step and then we extract the latent targets or the corresponding masks and in the second step we use these ideal targets combined with the SISDR loss as we said before and we train only the separation module. During inference we just estimate some latent targets and then we use the pre-trained decoder in order to go back to the time domain and reconstruct the time domain signal representation of the sources. So the notable distinctions uh, from this work and the end-to-end -end approach is that uh, the, in, in our two-step approach, we just need to train the encoder and decoder only once, and we can reuse it as many times uh, as we want. Moreover, the separation on the latent space uh, makes sense uh, both empirically and uh, theoretically. We have conducted uh, several experiments for various uh, sound separation tasks, as we show here. Uh, for example, we have speech uh, separation, which uh, in which we are mixing others in utterances from different speakers uh, extracted from the Wall Street Journal corpus. For the non-speech separation, we are using the environmental sound classification or the collection, which consists of 50 uh, different types of sounds. And for the mix separation, we are actually mixing sources from spits and non spits while the mixture could, only could also contain only spits or only non spits uh, examples. So the separation modules that we are taking into account, uh, the first one is the time-deleted convolutional network, which, uh, which has stacked blocks of dilated depth-wise separable convolution, and it's extremely similar to conf dasnet And the second one is the residual TDCN, which also has some feature-wise normalization layers and some long skip residual connections from the previous uh, stack blocks, and it's very similar to, uh, to the network that, uh, that has been uh, introduced in WASPA for universal sound uh, source operation. In more detail, for our data generation, uh, we generate uh, for training 20,000 mixtures, but we also introduce a data augmentation procedure, which has greatly helped to improve the performance of our models. So the augmentation goes like this. First, we choose at random two source audio files 
then we crop randomly four second source segments and then we mix uh, these segments at various signal to noise ratios. In these experiments, we want, we want to show uh, the difference between the end-to-end -end approach where we jointly train um, using the time domain loss versus our approach, the two-step approach, where we optimize directly using the ideal latent targets. And for the final evaluation of all models, we use SIS, the, the scale environment signal to distortion ratio improvement over the input mixture computed in the time domain. For the final uh, experiments for, uh, for the results, we see, we see here uh, that we have the two separation modules and the target domain could be either the time domain, which uh, indicates the end-to-end -end approach and the latent space, which is the two-step approach. We see for both models and for all tasks that the two-step can actually yield a higher separation performance compared to the end-to-end -end, uh, approach. If we take also a look at the separation uh, oracles, we, we compare our oracle, which is our ideal uh, targets, ideal, um, uh, ideal targets for the sources, compared to the ones that we can get with the short time for get transform ideal binary mask. And we see here that we can see, we have a significantly high upper higher upper bound for separation performance when we use uh, this kind of targets. And this also holds across all tasks. If we take a closer look at these uh, encoded representations, and for example, here we have a speech utterance uh, mixed with a bird sound, as we see here. At the top row, we see that the two-step approach manages to uh, manages to uh, pr produce some kind of more sparse uh, representations of these sounds, and also a very dissimilar between two different. Um, uh, types of sources. Uh, specifically, we see that that bird chirping uses much more basis in order to be um, in order to be represented compared compared to speeds. And certainly, this is not the case for the end-to-end -end approach, where we see here that it uses most most of the encoder bases. In order to conclude. We, in this paper, we have introduced the two-step source separation approach, where we first learn a transformation which facilitates the separation procedure, and we extract some latent targets in order to train the separation, the separator module at the second step. By pre-training the encoder and the decoder, we have shown that, that uh, it, it yields a consistent sound separation performance improvement across uh, various tasks and when when we are using different uh, separation modules as well. It also leads to a significantly higher per bound of performance for uh, for all the separation tasks uh, when when we have seen that the ideal targets score much much higher significantly higher than uh, the ideal binary mask in the short time for yet transform domain. And also, it leads to sparser latent representation of sounds for different classes compared to the end-to-end -end approach. In the future, we would like to use more complex encoder and decoder modules in order to reduce the number of trainable parameters in the second step of our approach. Uh, as well, we would like to see uh, if various transfer learning approaches could be utilized in order to fine-tune only the essential parts of the model. So that's all from me. Um, I'm glad that you watched the video and I'm waiting to see you all in the Q&A session. Thank you very much.